yeah, so welcome to my carving shed. Um, as you saw in the thumbnail, we are going to get started on a war mask, a Native American war mask, um, using whitetail deer skull. A couple things about this really quick. This is my own personal interpretation of what a Native American war mask might be like. Okay, keep that in mind. Number two, Zane Wiley, you can look him up over here. Um, he did a war mask with a human skull, so I kind of got the idea from him. I was like, oh sweet, that would be awesome with a deer skull. And of course, Native Americans used uh, these war masks and they would mostly use them in like traditional dances. There's a lot of different reasons why they make these masks and you can look those up. But this is just my own personal take on that idea of using a skull as a war mask. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. I am gonna end up cutting the skull up quite a bit and then using the different pieces to kind of um, create this mask that will go over your face. I don't know how it's all gonna hold there, how it's gonna stay in place yet, but I'm just gonna kind of map it out, figure out where I need to make the cuts, and then the pieces that are cut out, I can kind of map out and see where they would go on this mask thing. Okay, so I think I've got the, uh, the first plan in action ready to go. Uh, I am going to keep the entire uh, skull plate intact with the eye sockets here. Um, so I'm just going to cut up the side, cut around the eye sockets. Um, then in the back, you might be able to see a little bit. I'm going to come up here and then just go above uh, the back of the, the cranium here. And then that will leave that entire thing in place. It will be like the main focus of the skull. And then once I have all this taken off, we can kind of chop that up and see how to uh, incorporate it into the, the rest of the mask. Again, the square crosscut burr just was creating a little bit too, too much vibration while cutting the lines. So I'm going to use a, see if it'll adjust here, um, just a diamond dust uh, cylinder shaped burr. That'll create a lot uh, smoother cut. Moment of truth should come apart. Ugh. I know it's hung up inside there somewhere, but I don't want to. All right, give me a minute. Yes, I know some of you are cringing and I am too, but in the end, I think it'll be worth it. Woo! Now look at that! Ha ha! It's even better than what I thought it would look like. Let's see. 
How's that? So the skull cap is done. There's nothing further aside from just cleaning it up um, as far as structure wise. So this is good to go. Now it's just the rest of the skull that I'm going to piece up and then add to uh, the skull cap. Originally, I was going to take the teeth out, make a necklace out of them, you know, to go along with the mask. But I think it would be better to keep the teeth in and have it as like hanging down as like part of the jaw. I don't have a lower uh, mandible a jaw to go with it, so I'm going to see if I can try to find one because I think that would just really make it complete with like the lower jaw hanging down. So I'm going to keep the teeth in. Um, I may pull some teeth and still make a necklace from another, you know, random skulls I have pieces, um, but we'll we'll get to that uh, later down the road. So now I just got to figure out how to piece this thing up so that it looks nice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is what I came up with. Um, we've got our main skull cap here. It's going to go like so. Then I've got these two pieces, which are going to go on top. So you can see this here as like uh, feathers. I'm going to carve, carve them into feathers. So those will go on top. The uh, sides of the jaw will hang down on either side. And then this piece, which was originally the back, the back of the skull there um, will be like kind of like I don't know, fangs or a mouth or something like that. So this will go over here, so you can see this. And then this will tuck in underneath your chin, like that. Like so. So, pretty excited. Um, I think it's going to work out well. I've got some extra pieces back here which I can kind of carve into smaller pieces to maybe fill in some gaps or help pull it together or even possibly hang off the antlers. So, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. Um, this is just part one. There will be a part two and so on for the skull just because it is such a big project. Um, so stick around for that. There will be a link in the description to the next episode. So uh, thanks for hanging out in my uh, carving shed at my carving bench. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for subscribing and watching and liking and yeah, all that good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, everyone, so I want to say two things really quickly. First off is um, a big thank you to Gustav for leaving a five-star review on my Facebook page. Um, I was having kind of a down week. A couple things came up. Uh, really was, you know, making the week not so great for me. So uh, getting his review really helped me out. He said, Hunter is a truly inspiring person, sharing his knowledge and a passion for his craft with others. Always love watching his videos to learn the one or the other thing about the technical aspects of carving. Uh, furthermore, they show his love for details. Thank you, Gustav. That, that really helped me out this week. I, I appreciate that. It came at a good time. Uh, second thing is, thank you for sticking around. And because you stuck around and watched the whole video, I'm doing a giveaway. Um, just go in the link. Uh, there is a link in the description of this video. I am giving away a hat with my logo on there. And uh, it's a snapback hat. I have two different um, styles on my website that you can purchase. Or you can win it for free. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, enter the giveaway. And uh, I will see you in the next video.